Hi guys, it's Professor Costa, and today we're going to be going over impaired central um, uh, perfusion for cerebral. This is just the acute phase, part one. This wonderful PowerPoint was developed by Professor Maria Corsetti, who I don't know if you all know her, is a specialist in uh, neuro and has worked at Rhode Island Hospital for a number of years. And she's the one that identified that perhaps we had a small hole in the development of our curriculum. We introduced you to the um, acute stroke and how to recognize ischemic versus hemorrhagic stroke and administration of TPA. But then she saw that perhaps you hadn't put the whole picture together and weren't understanding the critical care that is involved following one of these catastrophic events. So our objectives today you need to know how to do a neuroassessment. I can't say it any other way. You need to be able to recognize acute changes in the person's cognition, sensation, mobility, or perfusion. If you don't remember what the um, cranial nerves are or how to um, perform an assessment of those nerves, if you don't know how to do a basic neuroassessment, you need to go back to your skills book and review, okay? You need to plan and prioritize nursing care for patients and their families following an acute stroke and you need to plan and prioritize nursing care involved in the pharmacologic and surgical management of acute stroke. We have brand new stuff now. Okay, so the acute phase. So stroke, this isn't new. You learned this in 1020, right? And then we looked at the more chronic consequences of stroke, like making sure that, you know, that we're not um, putting their call light on the wrong side and that we're keeping track of their mobility and ADLs. We're gonna look at the now, like they just had a stroke yesterday. How do we care for those patients in a critical care environment, okay? So this, we're really gonna focus on the acute phase, all right? So the slides labeled review, you are already familiar with from Nursing 1020. It is not new material. All right, so we have two major types of stroke. We have ischemic which I, I know this is a horrible way to say, but fortunately um, is about 85% of all strokes, right? The one we have the, the most potential of fixing right away is the ischemic. So luckily that's the majority, right? So an area of the brain is deprived of blood from an obstruction, right? And then we have hemorrhagic, which is around 15% of all strokes. And that's a weakened vessel that ruptures causing bleeding in the brain. So a thrombotic, right, or ischemic stroke, a clot forms in the blood vessel. It's often associated with atherosclerosis. Um, it can, this can happen over years, and sometimes we get a warning shot, right? We get that, um, you know, TIA that occurs. Um, and those, I believe, are the most fortunate patients. Patients that have a TIA um, before the big event occurs and can get worked up and potentially have this, um, you know, prevented. Um, but not everybody has that fortunate occurrence of a TIA. This tends to have a slow onset um, and it evolves over minutes to hours. It isn't just an immediate like boom. It's not like a gunshot usually. All right. Um, an embolic stroke occurs when an embolus originates from other parts of the body. So it can also break off from sclerosis plaques. And this comes from cardiac sources usually. The big culprit put a little star next to it. The big one, the big one is AFib, right? So that puts you at such a high risk of embolic stroke that, you know, that, you know, you should always think AFib and risk for stroke. Heart disease, myocardial infarction, um, prosthetic valves, endocarditis, or a patent um, foramen ovale, all right? So um, it's either something that occurs at the site Right? We have some uh, clot that forms at the site, or we have something that breaks off and floats up. All right. So the first moments of an ischemic stroke would be that abrupt loss of focal cerebral perfusion. Right. So we know that we need perfusion to have aerobic metabolism. And if we have decreased O2 and glucose delivery, we're not going to be able to run the show, right? We're not going to be able to run our, our cells in our brain. They're not going to do um, their work. And we're also going to lose that sodium potassium pump. And we're going to have a swelling that occurs, right? So we're going to have um, breakdown of the blood brain barrier. That's what BBB, right? So we're going to have swelling, ischemia, and infarction. 
So we're going to have uh, a brain that is uh, deprived of oxygen and glucose, and we're going to have swelling, right? And remember that our brain is kind of uh, encased in our own helmet, the skull. So there isn't a lot of room for swelling in there. Remember, it's, a, it's an enclosed helmet. So if it swells too much, then we're going to have some uh, movement, which we don't want. So this would be a good slide to know too. So risk factors for ischemic stroke, right? So modifiable and non-modifiable. Hypertension, atrial fibrillation, cigarette smoking. Oh my God, cigarette smoking is a huge risk factor for these clients as well. And it is a modifiable risk factor. You can decide to quit smoking, all right? Hyperlipidemia. So um, patients may be taught to you know, reduce their fat intake, like, Maybe you should lay off the 15 slices of bacon every day. Um, and Or maybe you should start a statin medication. Alcohol abuse, carotid stenosis, physical inactivity, obesity, and diabetes, right? Think about what diabetes does to your blood vessels in general. And it's no wonder that it is um, a leading contributor for stroke. Non-modifiable, you can't change your age. You can't change your sex. Well... In nursing literature, let's say you can't change your sex, really, your your DNA, um, but obviously um, race, and, race and ethnicity cannot be changed, and heredity, right? So um, you can't change um, your genome at this point. You never know. Give us another, you know, 100 years or so. But there are things that are, um, there are patients that are at higher risk because of family um, history. Additional risk factors, okay. And um, sleep apnea is a huge risk. Just the, the, the deprivation and increase of uh, O2, and it also can cause um, some swelling, and it also just increases just the nastiness up there. So sleep apnea often goes hand in hand with obesity, uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, sickle cell anemia is an additional risk factor. Substance abuse or substance use disorder would definitely increase your risk for stroke. And I didn't know this myself until I went to a stroke conference oh God, when was that? Uh, about six years ago. I went to a stroke conference, um, which was a fabulous event. I strongly advise you once you get into professional practice that if you're offered the opportunity to go to a conference, you go. You learn so much. I didn't realize that the southeast of the U.S., their stroke uh, rates are way higher than ours are up here. It's amazing. So places I joke about like Alabama, Mississippi, OMG, they have much higher risks of stroke in that um, area. They also have way higher risk factors for hypertension as well. Okay, so the pathophysiology of hemorrhagic stroke. Here's a key thing that I want you to take away from this is any time blood is not encased in a blood vessel, right? So any vein or artery or capillary, the blood is supposed to stay there. If it leaks out into the space surrounding it or you or pours out in some kind of a bleed, um, it by nature is caustic, meaning it causes pain and swelling. It activates the inflammatory response and the clotting cascade. That's what's supposed to keep you alive. So if you have blood outside of a vessel in your brain, guess what? You're going to have a headache, right? These clients will often complain of a severe headache. Um, we're going to have edema and vasospasm, right? Um, so a, a hemorrhagic stroke is caused by intracerebral or subarachnoid hemorrhage. And we have bleeding into the brain tissue, ventricles, or subarachnoid space, right? So we have this irritating blood that's leaking out, and we're going to have, you know, headache, we're going to have edema, vasospasm, and this typically occurs during active waking hours. It's rare to have a hemorrhagic stroke during sleep. All right, so how do we prevent stroke? So we want to review the client's risk factors or review our own risk factors for personal risk. Are you a smoker with AFib and diabetes, right? And we want to reduce those through lifestyle changes or medication. We want to 
um, teach our client and their family signs and symptoms using the FAST or BFAST mnemonic, the facial drooping, arm weakness, slurred speech, and time. Time has to be noted and to call 911 if signs and symptoms present. So signs to call 911 would be sudden weakness, numbness in the face or arm or leg, sudden confusion, difficulty speaking or understanding speech, sudden difficulty with vision, or sudden severe headache with no cause. I had a client that I took care of and it, she wasn't, um, I wasn't taking care of her for her stroke. I was taking care of her for another medical issue, but I was re reviewing her history and noted that she had a history of ischemic stroke. And this woman had no obvious neuro deficit. She was, you know, communicative. She could move easily. She had no obvious signs that she had any impairment in the past. And she told me what happened. She was um, a young woman. She's in her early 50s and she was on Cape Cod in the summertime walking around and um, with her family, luckily, and she lost a grip on her cell phone, which made me laugh because I think my kids would pick up immediately that there's something wrong with me if I couldn't hold on to my cell phone. It's like basically an additional limb and her grasp was off. So they called 911 and it turned out she was having an ischemic stroke and she was on Cape Cod in the middle of the summer holidays. The traffic is terrible. So they actually had to fly her um, off the Cape so that she could be treated. And she was luckily treated immediately and had um, a full recovery or so it seemed. So it isn't always like my whole side goes numb and droops. It may be something subtle too. So any sudden weakness or numbness um, it, it can be very subtle. We want to make sure that our patient and their family know this mnemonic and know that uh, fast recognition of a stroke. So face, are both sides equal? Is the smile equal? Not everyone feels like smiling. Sometimes I just ask patients, show me your teeth or where your teeth would be if you had teeth. Arms, can the client raise both arms equally? right? Speech, is the speech slurred or can, you know, the client make a comp, you know, a sentence that you can understand or um, time, right? That note the time that uh, of the onset of symptoms and also call 911, get help as soon as possible. So here's some pharmacological uh, intervention for prevention of ischemic stroke. So some patients are on a daily aspirin, either 81 milligrams, which is the baby aspirin, or a full adult aspirin, or maybe two baby aspirin. Then everyone's a little, you know, their, their cardiologist may place them on that for um, whatever risk, or they may have had a TIA in the past and had intervention, or, um, and some patients are on Plavix, which is the pl clopidogrel, right? We know patients with AFib are going to be on some type of anticoagulation. Um, or if they have a mechanical heart valve. So our mechanical heart valve patients would be on Coumadin. They, a patient may be on F factor 10A inhibitor. That's a pet peeve of mine. That's not an X. That is the Roman numeral 10. So a 10A inhibitor. Lucky for you, most of the, either the brand or generic names have XA in the name somewhere. And that gives you a clue that it's a factor 10A inhibitor. So Xarelto or Aliquis or Pradaxa are some of the key brand names, which are also Rivaroxaban, right? Okay, or Apixaban. Antihypertensive meds, we know hypertension is a risk factor, so making sure patients have their blood pressure controlled and are taking their antihypertensives as ordered. Lipid-lowering lipid drugs like a statin would be um, really important as well. 